I wanted to make one other remark about existence proofs that um, should have been in the uh, previous set of slides, but um, I think I'll just add it separately. And that is just to point out what happens if you want to prove that something doesn't exist. So um, we gave the example uh, of the Pythagorean theory, uh, Pythagorean triples, if you'll recall that um, a Pythagorean triple is a set a is a set a collection of integers three integers such that a squared c squared is a squared plus b squared and we proved a theorem that a pythagorean triple exists by presenting an example Let's look at a slightly different example. Uh, let's a slightly different example. Let's call a Fermat triple. This is my terminology. It's not standard, but for, let's just use it for the moment. This is going to be a collection of numbers a, b, and c. Um, not zero. With the property that c cubed equals a cubed plus b cubed. So um, a Fermat triple is like a Pythagorean triple, except that um, you have the cube instead of the square. So the theorem is no Fermat triple exists. So this is the negation of a there exists statement. So to prove that something exists, it's enough to give an example of it. To prove that something doesn't exist is often much harder because what you have to show is, remember that the, the negation of a there exists is a for all. So from a logical point of view, this is the negation of the statement there exists X such that X is a Fermat triple. And the negation of that statement is for all x, x is not a Fermat triple. In other words, you have to show that no matter what collection of what triple of non-zero integers you pick, it's never the case that c cubed equals a cubed plus b cubed. And in fact, that's, this theorem is true, but it's hard to prove. I'm not going to prove it now. Um, the proof requires, is typically done by contradiction. That is to say, you assume it does exist. So you assume ABC satisfies C cubed equals A cubed plus B cubed, and you eventually deduce a contradiction. So that's a very common way to disprove an existence theorem, is to show that if you assume that the thing that's being claimed exists, then something goes wrong. I realize this is all a little bit vague, and we'll see some more examples later, but I did want to get it on the record now that um, proving that something doesn't exist is uh, the equivalent of showing that for all somethings, the property that you're looking for doesn't hold.